opens a transparent trading room for cutting EU red tape. Europe needs reform. Hello everybody, welcome to my video blog for July. Um, here we are in Strasbourg, it's nice and sunny and warm um, after all the rain we've been having. So that's one good thing. Not much else good going on here uh, this week, I'm afraid. Um, Post-Brexit, um, for us Brits, it's still quite difficult. Uh, it feels like you're going to a funeral most of the time. Everyone's very sympathetic and uh, says they're terribly sorry. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's very strange, it's very strange. But of course, um, attitudes to the future are crystallizing and hardening. And it's very clear that uh, whatever deal we get post-Brexit, um, it's not going to be a good one. And why would it be? Uh, as I was saying before the referendum, and uh, many are saying now, what would the point of the club be to give somebody a better deal outside the club than they had in it? Now, that's not to say we won't be able to survive. Of course we will. Um, and uh, we, as Britain, of course we can go forward. But it is rather strange to be listening to talk about single market deals which would deliver us full access to the single market but which we would have to make a, a cash payment for and for which uh, we would have to accept the four keys including free movement of people. And if that ends up being the deal that we have, frankly we need to ask ourselves why do we leave the European Union for that deal because that's effectively what we have now. But now we have the added advantage of having a commissioner and members of parliament speak up for Britain. In the future, if we do a single market free movement deal, we would not have that. And it would seem utterly self-destructive to agree to that um, when we've left. So um, it'll be very, very interesting to see what happens. Of course, we have no idea because even in the throes of our party leadership competition, we, we're still getting a sort of wait and see message from most of the candidates. And indeed, how could they do anything other? Because it's been completely revealed by the referendum. Nobody, nobody who wanted to leave had a plan for what was going to happen. And that's all playing itself out now. As I stand here now, I just had an email to tell me that pound, the pound has hit an all time low um, for the last um, several years at, at 127, which to be honest, uh, I thought we were on the way back up. Uh, so I think it's absolutely the case that there will be a lot of economic uncertainty over the next months. Let's hope it's not too damaging. I'm much more concerned about the long-term indications for the economy. Um, I hear a lot of stories about uh, a lack of faith in terms of investment in, long t in medium and long-term futures for, for business. And one also, of course, hears already uh, about recruitment freezes in big companies. So let's hope this is all very temporary and get on and, and get ourselves out of it. But to do that, we need to look at our friends at Westminster, not just Tories, but uh, Labour as well. They need to get themselves sorted out uh, toot sweet, as we say here in Strasbourg. So uh, what am I going to be doing? A lot of you have emailed me. Oh, and by the way, thank you so much to all of you who've written such lovely emails. I've, I've really enjoyed reading them. And if any of you are listening who've written some of the nasty ones, why are you still listening to me? Um, I have got an awful lot still to do here. Just completed my clean air legislation and we will be acting as full members of this parliament until such time as the UK leaves the EU. So plenty to do. Look forward to seeing you all again in September. Have a lovely summer.